Hey everyone, and welcome to Space Week for Monday, December 9th, 2019. Last Monday, astronauts Luca Parmitano and Drew Morgan completed the third of four planned spacewalks, or EVAs, extravehicular activities, to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer Cosmic Ray Detector. During the first EVA back in mid-November, they removed covers from the AMS and prepared their worksite. On the second EVA, they severed the pencil-sized carbon dioxide coolant lines with their rough cut tool, basically a fancy bolt cutter, rendering the $2 billion AMS unusable until the repairs are complete. This third EVA was the most technically complex, but interestingly also the shortest by about 20 minutes. They attached a new 350-pound pump module to the 7.5-ton AMS, plugged in power and data cables, then spliced together eight of the coolant lines that were cut on the previous EVA. The splicing technique they used brings us to a new Space Week feature I thought would be fun. The term of the week. Luca Parmitano connected the coolant lines by swaging them. I'd never heard of this term, so I naturally assumed that NASA just made it up. Silly me. It turns out the word swage, sometimes pronounced swedge, dates back at least 200 years, and it derives from the old French word swage for decorative groove or ornamental molding. Swaging is typically a cold forging process that involves physically changing the dimensions of an object by forcing it into a mold or by extruding it through a die. In the case of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer's coolant lines, they were swaged by expanding the interior diameter of the pipe on the AMS side so that the corresponding pipe on the pump module side could be snugly inserted. This forms a good connection between the two pipes. Swaging is used all the time in plumbing and HVAC repair. Understandably, swaging only works with malleable materials such as copper. If you were to try swaging a PVC pipe, it would just crack. Now that the coolant lines are all connected, the AMS's heart surgery is pretty much complete. The fourth and final EVA will involve checking the system for leaks and reinstalling the insulation material. However, the crew's December schedule is very busy. The arrival of Dragon and Progress cargo modules, a Boeing Starliner crew capsule, and crew research tasks throughout the month of December will potentially push the fourth AMS EVA out to January or beyond. NASA also has two more EVAs worth of lithium-ion batteries to install. You may remember a bunch of EVAs earlier this year to replace old nickel-hydrogen batteries. They had some problems with the Battery Charge Discharge Units, or BCDUs, that regulate the amount of charge put into each battery. So NASA's taking a look at how they want to move forward with installing the new batteries on the space station's 4B channel. Since they're critical to the functioning of the space station, the batteries are considered higher priority than the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Yet, the two already assembled EMUs, or spacesuits, are already sized for Luca and Drew, who did the first three AMS EVAs together and are the most knowledgeable about it. Resizing a suit takes multiple hours of work, and any time you take a suit apart, you increase risk. Avoiding a suit resizing is why astronaut Anne McLean couldn't join Christina Cook in what was supposed to be the first all-female spacewalk back in March. Instead, that milestone had to wait until October, when Christina was joined by Jessica Meir. If the AMS EVA is pushed out too far, say past March 2020, then Luca Parmitano will be due to return to Earth along with Christina Cook and Alexander Skvortsov. This would not only remove the lead AMS spacewalker, but the final EVA would have to wait until there was a full complement of six crew again in April. Hopefully NASA can get it done in January. The latter half of last week was a busy one for launches. On Thursday, a SpaceX Falcon 9 launched the Dragon CRS-19 supply module to the ISS. It arrived on Sunday at 4 in the morning, my time. Apologies to those of you who were expecting a live stream of the rendezvous and capture. I accidentally slept right through it. They really need to schedule these things at more convenient times for me. SpaceX also announced that they completed their seventh successful system test of Crew Dragon's Mark III parachutes. The parachutes need at least 10 consecutive test successes in order to qualify for NASA Human Spaceflight certification. In the wee hours of Friday, or very late Thursday for you West Coasters, Rocket Lab launched their 10th Electron rocket, called Running Out of Fingers. They reported a successful guided re-entry of Stage 1, which is a step toward their goal of descending the first stage on a parachute to be caught in mid-air by a helicopter for recovery and reuse. 
Less than two hours later, a Soyuz 2.1 rocket lifted off from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with the Progress 74P supply module to the ISS. It's scheduled to arrive on Monday morning, before this episode premieres. On Saturday, China launched two X-Pace Kuaizhou 1A rockets within six hours of each other. The first carrying the Zhilin-1 Gaofen 02B Earth Imaging Satellite, and the second with a payload of six small satellites. Both rockets lifted off from road mobile transporters reminiscent of Russian mobile ICBM launchers. The name Kuaizhou means speedy vessel. First flown in 2017, it's capable of delivering a 200 kilogram payload into a 435 mile or 700 kilometer high orbit. Saturday's launches were from Taiyuan Space Center in northern China's Zhangxi province. All previous Kuaizhou launches were done from the Zhuquan Satellite Launch Center, 620 miles or 1,000 kilometers to the west, in the Gobai Desert of China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. SpaceX is putting their Cocoa Florida facility on pause, redistributing most of the personnel and some of the equipment to Boca Chica, Texas, Hawthorne, California, and Roberts Road at nearby Kennedy Space Center. Coco is where the Starship Mark II orbital prototype was being built, in competition with the Mark I prototype that blew its top in Boca Chica last month. SpaceX is now focusing on Mark III, which will be developed in Boca Chica. Looking ahead to this week, we've got just a couple launches. On Tuesday, December 10th, at 3.59 a.m. Eastern, 8.59 GMT, a Russian Soyuz 2.1b will launch GLONASS-M Navigation Satellite No. 59 into a medium Earth orbit of about 11,900 miles, or 19,100 kilometers. There usually isn't live coverage available for these internal Russian launches. Then on Wednesday, December 11th, at 4.55 a.m. Eastern, 9.55 GMT, India will launch PSLV C-48 with the RISAT 2BR-1 Radar Earth Observation Satellite for ISRO, the Japanese QPS SAR microsatellite, and four Lemur-2 CubeSats for Spire Global. There may be live coverage, so stay tuned. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. As always, feel free to like, subscribe, and activate notifications if you don't want to miss anything. If you enjoy content like this and would like to help out, there are Patreon and PayPal links in the description. Space Week is also available as an audio podcast at rawspace.podomatic.com and on iTunes at tiny.cc spaceweek. See you next time.